know if we have some media in here. Oh, thank you, thank you. We know it's open. Yeah, and then that'd be one, two, three, four. <laughs> so. So there's an R4 or are you? Oh, we, we got, I'm good. Oh, okay. I'm thinking worst case. Thank you. Plan ahead, one bunch. Just bring in three players. Got those keys in? Um, yeah, he'll go at the far end. Um, wait a minute, that's the wrong one. They're not bringing Zyder? Susan, no Zyre, right?
Hey, Greg, they just added one. No? Um, I do. As we await the arrival of Texas Tech in the interview room, uh, some reminders. Uh, for those of you working at courtside, please be advised that two hours after the conclusion of this game, so basically from right now, uh, arena crews will begin tearing down the basketball court in press row. So please uh, move and complete your work here in the media workroom, if you could. But you have two hours, but then that's when they'll start tearing it down. Um, transcripts, you can find them uh, online at ncaa.com slash transcripts. Um, remember, there is no video of any kind here in the interview room, no flash photography, and please silence all cell phones. Satellite coordinates, Galaxy 17, KU Band, Transponder 17C. Uh, it's 12044.5 horizontal and the symbol rate is 7.2 with the FEC 5 over 6. Media in the back, Texas Tech has arrived on stage. We are ready to begin with uh, Texas Tech, Coach Chris Beard. Four student athletes with us tonight, Justin Gray, Zach Smith, Keenan Evans, and uh, Norenz Odiase. Coach, congratulations, you, you and your Red Raiders heading to the Sweet 16. Can you say that again? You're heading to the Sweet 16. There we are. <laughs> I want to congratulate Florida on another great season. Um, a lot of respect for their team. Uh, their coach at Louisiana Tech. When I was at Little Rock, I kind of looked up to guys like that who um, have won wherever they've been and gotten opportunities. So he's somebody I've always respected. Then to compete against him tonight, it was as good as advertised. Uh, definitely one of the toughest offensive teams we played against all year. They just had it so spread out. Uh, we were forced to kind of go small ball. And two of our better players, Norrence and Tommy, just kind of made a coaching decision. And when you make those decisions, you just hope and pray that it works out because uh, regret's pretty tough to handle. So it went our way tonight. Uh, you know, a little bit of destiny at the end. Florida got three great looks. We were just really, really fortunate. Um, but I think you got to give our guys a lot of credit. You know, we held them under 70 points. Uh, we had three guys in double figures. We had a lot of balance. Our two young guys, Culver and Z, were big time tonight, especially rebounding the ball when we were forced to go small ball. So, um, you know, just really pleased uh, to coach these guys and to advance. You know, we looked at this at kind of like a four-team tournament. We know we had to win two games to get to the regional. And so now we got a, a chance at another four-team tournament um, to ultimately get to the biggest stage. Uh, but again, a lot of respect to Florida. Congratulations to them on a great season. And I'm really proud of our guys for advancing. Thank you, Coach. Let's go to questions for the four guys. We'll come back for Coach Beard at the end. We have Casey on this side, Katie on, on the uh, extreme left. Uh, again, state name and affiliation when you ask your question. Who wants to go first for any of the four? Okay, guys, on your left in the middle. Jared Johnson with Inside the Red Raiders. I just want to ask, I guess Keenan, really is for all four of y'all, but the fact that y'all have made this journey together, y'all came in at the same time, and then 
you know, uh, new coaching staff, just your feeling to be going to the Sweet 16 now? Um, it's amazing. Um, I feel like words can't really describe, but, you know, this journey with these guys and, you know, Coach Beard came in and said he's going to win. And after last season was a disappointment. He told us we're going to get to that tournament next year and we're going to make a run. And, you know, he kept his word and here we are. Other questions? Okay, guys, we'll move to the uh, right side on the front. Skyler Dixon with the AP. Keenan, you've talked before about how every night senior night. How does that motivate you late in games? Uh, it's everything. Um, you know, as that clock runs down, it's kind of, you know, look at it like, man, I don't want my season to be over. And, you know, these guys are the same way. So we're just taking it uh, into account that, you know, senior night. Okay, we'll move back to the left in the middle. This is for Zach. Um, kind of late in the game, you got matched up with one of their guards. They kind of had you on the perimeter, but you were able to track them down and get that block. Can you kind of take us through uh, that play? Uh, we were switching the whole game, uh, trying to stay in front. And I knew I uh, couldn't give up a three. And when he drove, uh, I just tried to make a play on the ball, and I was able to make the play. Okay, extreme right now. Josh Peter with USA Today for uh, Keenan. I wonder if you can explain what happened on that, uh, the alley-oop in the last uh, minute, how it got set up. And uh, Coach drew up, you know, a pick-and-roll play for me. Uh, Zach came out. The guy kind of, you know, came out too hard, and I saw an opening, so I kind of split it. And Zaire, you know, Coach told him to be waiting right there, and I know, you know, just like I was hoping he'd make a 360 dunk again, but that didn't work out. But, you know, I saw him right there, so I threw it up, and, you know, he went and finished it. Okay, in the middle, here on the right. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American. Uh, Keenan, besides yourself, Isaiah really seemed to take over the game at times. What in the heck is this guy's upside? It's just a freshman and what he's doing already. Man, it's, it's, you know, he has no ceiling. And you know, even after the season when he works and he works even this week, he's going to be putting in more work. And he's one of the most hardworking guys. And, you know, it's just shown all season. Extreme left by the TV lights. Austin Watts, Daily Twitter. Justin, y'all come out, or they, uh, Florida comes out and scores 23 in the first 10 minutes, and then in the second 10 minutes, y'all hold them to only 10 points. What changed there, and what do y'all fix defensively? Just being a more aggressive and disciplined team. That's what Coach Beard preaches to us. Um, you know, just making plays on defense and making, you know, make tough shots. You know, if they make tough shots, then we'll live with it. But just trying to take away those easy shots, open threes, transition threes. Uh, and I feel like we did a great job of that. Other questions for any of the four? Coach is not going anywhere. He's coming right back. OK. On the right. OK, extreme right. No. For Keenan and Justin, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, where was uh, Coach Beard's intensity tonight? Like any other game, he, he's one of the most you know, energized people in life. Um, he told us, you know, y'all do y'all thing and I get the crowd ready. And that's exactly what he did. Every time we score, you see him on the sideline going like this and, you know, getting the crowd into the game. So, you know, and definitely, you know, thank you to, you know, all of our fans for being there and supporting us because this one, they, they were a big help. Uh, yeah, just like Keenan said, his intensity is, is always great every single game, uh, very high. You know, he gets us going. Uh, and I think the most impressive thing, you know, he's doing all that on still a torn ACL. So I don't, I don't know how he does that, but it's, it's impressive to me. Okay, again, extreme left. Austin Watts, Daily Twitter. Norris, uh, y'all come out and you're on the eight and two run. And I think that was the most excited I've ever seen Coach Beard before. How was that feeling to get back out and get the lead coming into the second half? You always want to start off fast. When we, when we took the lead like that, it, it was special. Uh, they got it right back, but we know it's a game of runs. So we just stayed the course and it ended up working out for us. They will move back to the outside right. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, Gainesville Sun. Keenan, your, your neck for hitting big shots and big moments. How's that kind of developed over time for you? Uh, just my teammates and coaches instilling confidence in me to take those, take and make those big shots. Um, just, you know, putting in the work and, you know, staying confident in it and knowing my team needs me to do that. Again, in the middle. Uh, Justin, uh, there were so many 
there were so many fouls in the second half. It was a very clean first half, and then it seemed like there was a foul every possession. Did, did that upset anybody's rhythm or getting in and out of your offense, or it just seemed like there were so many whistles? Um, not really. Are you talking on the offensive end for us? No, not really. We're just trying to be aggressive, you know, attack. We know we were in double bonus early, so we're trying to make that, you know, a statement, you know, in the timeouts uh, to tell everybody, you know, get aggressive drive. Uh, we made a lot of great drives, and then, you know, once they collapsed, we pitched it, you know, to an open cutter or, you know, open person on the perimeter. So uh, there's a lot of things that just went into it, but it didn't really disrupt us at all. Extreme left. Keenan, coach described uh, getting to coach y'all seniors another day as, like, getting to play the lot is the best feeling in the world. How does it feel to get, like, another couple practices with coach? It means everything. You know, these four years feel like they, they've flown by, and once you get to this point, it's just like, man, I'm not ready for it to end. And, you know, here we are, you know, getting another week to, you know, prepare and play the game we love. Middle on the right. Yeah, uh, Keenan, I know Tex Tech is the three seeds, hardly a Cinderella at all, but it's first Sweet 16 in about 13 years. So what do you think the impact is on this program moving forward? I think it's a great impact. It sets, you know, sets the path for, you know, many, many more years. And with Coach Beer being here and his staff, you know, just that, you know, sets up, you know, success in the near future. Closing questions for our student athletes. Guys will go all the way in the back. Uh, Ivory Taylor, NBC5. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how important it is to get a game so close to campus, being in Dallas? No. We all have family from out here. Most of us are from the, this area. I mean, it was special. It was like a home game for us. So that definitely helped us tonight, and we used it to our advantage. Any other questions? No hands, guys, we'll let you go back to the locker room with uh, Matt Dunaway, your SID, to celebrate, maybe do some more interviews. Congratulations, and uh, good luck next week. Thank you so much. Terrific job. Let's go to questions now for Coach Beard. Love you, man. Hey, Tell Coach. Tell Keenan to call right. timeout when he gets trapped. Chris, did you get dunked on already? Hey, you know, like, my middle daughter, Ella, is the one that did it, too. She knows I only have, like, two suits. <laughs> and um, it's one thing if it's, like, in the celebration, no problem. But, like, mm -hmm. literally, she just, like, came over to me and dumped it. So <laughs> talk to her later about that. Celebrate this. Is this like a double patty, double cheese night? Or how do you celebrate this? Hey, we're going to keep going with this guy. <laughs> we can change the narrative if you want. How does this – this is a program-altering win for you and what you're doing at Tech in your second year. I don't think so. Uh, I understand and I respect the question, but we've got a great university. Uh, we've got big time facilities and we've got the best fans in college basketball, in my opinion. We're playing in one of the best conferences. I mean, this is what we should be doing. You know, a, a good season should be a good seed and making a run every year should be NCAA tournament. So, um, you know, a lot of work went into this, but we're just getting started. And I told the guys before this ever started, you know, last Sunday, I guess it was, after the selection show, I was like, look, there's 68 teams in the tournament. A lot of the teams will just show up to be a part of it, and it'll overwhelm them. A select few, uh, the Kansases, the Michigan States, the Dukes, the Carolinas, these type people will go to win the tournament. And I was like, let's be one of those. You know, whether we're going to win it or not, a lot of things have to happen, but let's be a team that embraces trying to win it. So. We're not here just to have a good time. You know, we're here to advance. So this was a four-team tournament for us, two games. Um, played against two really good teams. So now we got to get better and try to do the same thing next weekend. Up front, extreme left. Will McKay with Red Editor Sports. Coach, when you guys played Kulichov, when he was um, with uh, Rice last year, he dropped 25 on you. He had just 12 tonight, two for eight from three, and then uh, they just went six for 22 from three tonight. Can you just talk about how well you guys played with your perimeter defense tonight? Well, number one, we were really fortunate. You know, basketball in a lot of ways is a, is a game of making shots. Um, and all this stuff goes into it, the hours, the work. But at the end of the day, um, so sometimes you just get fortunate. So um, I thought he played great, and he got some good looks on us. The ball just didn't go in for him. Um, but I think you got to give our guys credit because we challenged shots. I did think we sped them up a little bit and got aggressive. Uh, that would be uh, up to coach 
their coach to talk about. But, um, you know, we knew if this game got in the 80s, no chance, you know, start the bus. I guess at this level, start the, start the jet. Um, but so we wanted to control the game with uh, our offense tempo-wise. And so with the game in the 60s and even at halftime, even though we were down one point, we felt comfortable with the pace. Um, we, we weren't going to beat Florida in the 80s or 90s, but we can, we can play with them uh, at this tempo game. Now on coaches, right? Yeah, two-part question. I wonder if you can talk about the commitment you made to your players that you're going to get the crowd ready. And two, I just look at the tape of you tearing your ACL. What the heck were you thinking, and how has it impacted you since then? Yeah, I'm not good at these double questions, man. I got like ADD. Uh, the last one was about the ACL. That's just embarrassing. Uh, set a flare screen in practice the night before the Iowa State game. Then had it all wrapped up during the game and told myself I was just going to, you know, just fake it, and then we had a play. Me and Naeem Stevenson disagreed on a, something that was going on on the court, and I just lost my mind. So it was really embarrassing. Uh, but I always want to thank the people from Iowa because they didn't make that big a deal about it. Great basketball people in Iowa. And then what was the first part of the question? Your players said you made a commitment to keeping the crowd uh, or getting the crowd ready. What did you do to make that happen? Yeah, I mean, way out of my comfort zone, really. I'd much prefer to sit there like a Coach Self or a Coach Smith or Coach K. But... You know, ultimately, I think the job of any coach, if it was just a one sentence answer in the dictionary or something, it'd be do everything you can to help your players win. Win in life, win, win on the court off. And so tonight, I felt like we worked so hard to get this seed and play in Dallas. So, you know, I got a little out of my comfort zone and kind of, you know, turned, you know, turned uh, cheerleader a little bit. But um, I want to thank everybody for responding. I know I must have looked like an idiot a lot doing that, but anything to help our guys. You know, I'll, I, would, I would do anything. Uh, to help our team. So maybe tonight, in some small way, I help get the crowd going. You know, I'll take it. Closing questions now. Let's go on the uh, left side, middle. Ryan Willett, ESPN San Antonio. Coach, midway through the second half, when Chioza picked up his fourth foul, putting you in the double bonus, how did you take advantage of that throughout the rest of the game? Well, that was a part of our game plan. You know, we always try to attack the other team's best players. To me, he's the driver of their their machine, you know, he's a special point guard. His speed is is unmatched. You know, we've seen a couple guys in the Big 12 that parallel that, but nobody quicker. And he's a great passer, and he's unselfish, and he can hit big shots too. So we made an emphasis to try to attack him on offense. You know, shot selection is one of our core values and principles. But I told the guys tonight, you know, you got a chance to be aggressive on their best players and maybe kind of will a shot up there. I won't, I won't get on you like normal. Um, but then I said, well, if I do, just remind me I said that, you know. But, uh, no, we were fortunate tonight that we got him in foul trouble and was able to play five or six minutes without him on the floor. It, it just helped us because, simply stated, he's one of their best players. Final question now for Coach Beard here on the left. Coach, uh, yesterday you said that uh, you're approaching this game as you had to play your best game uh, in order to get the win. Uh, do you feel like mission accomplished in that regard? In some ways, yes. You know, I think there was a period of this game, uh, just off my naked eye, you know, in a 40-minute game, we probably played about 22, 23 minutes as well as we can play. Uh, you know, offensively, especially in the second half, we got the motion going pretty good. We were getting back cuts and layups. We were getting fouls. Uh, I was really proud of our guys executing our motion offense in the second half. And then defensively, we were just trying to hold on. It wasn't pretty, but to hold Florida to 66 points, we had to do something right. Uh, so, yeah, I thought it was one of our better games. And, you know, I just, uh, just want to coach these guys another day. That's the bottom line. Just having so much fun with this group. Just want to have one more practice and one more film session and one more travel. And then uh, I'm sure when we get, you know, to the next destination, we'll get greedy and want to do it again. But uh, this is all about, you know, just surviving in advance. It really is. And I just, I'm just proud to be these guys' coach. Um, and just, we're just glad we get to live another day. All right, Coach. Thank you. And, again, Thanks. congratulations. Good luck next week.
Um, yeah, just hang on on those guys. And <clears throat> Here's Florida. We are ready to begin with the University of Florida. Head coach Mike White, the student athletes are uh, Chris Chioza and Igor Kulichov. Coach, we'll come to you first for your thoughts on tonight's game. Uh, obviously, really competitive game, high level basketball game, I thought. Congrats to Texas Tech. Um, they're a terrific team. They. Uh, they made big plays. They, uh, they made the plays down the stretch, of course, and, and got the defensive stop when they needed one. Again, Coach Beard and, and, um, and his staff and his team have had a, a great year, and, and we, we, we wish them luck <clears throat> moving forward. Uh, I thought Keenan Evans was, was terrific. Um, they got downhill a bunch. They, um, they cut really well. They drove it well, of course. Um, defended at a high level. They, they really defended us. Uh, from the three at a high level. Um, Zaire Smith, I thought, was, was terrific with 18-9 uh, and seven assists to one turnover. I thought he was really, really good. Um, I thought they hit timely shots, especially in the first half, uh, late shot clock shots. Uh, and he hit a couple there in the second half as well. I know Evans hit a huge uh, contested three by, I think Chris was on him late. Um, uh, opposite their bench was it was a huge shot um, you know tough tough deal for us uh, I thought we played well enough to have a chance and, and I, I've, I've said this a bunch to uh, our local media over the past couple weeks I've been really proud of the way this team has evolved and developed and um, and how we finished the season beating Auburn winning at Alabama beating Kentucky I thought we got a little bit out of character in the SEC tournament, and then we we turned right back around. I thought in this tournament we um, we were really good the other night, and and I thought we were pretty good tonight, and just got beat by a team who's who's probably just a little bit better. Uh, at least they were tonight. Um, that said, uh, this is a very uh, tough night for myself and my staff as we lose these two guys to my left, who um, have meant a lot to this program, uh, to this team but more importantly to, to this program. Um, two guys who are terrific players uh, and better people. Uh, two of the toughest guys in college basketball. If, we, if all 13 of, of my guys were as tough as these two, we'd still be playing. And uh, some of those young guys are gonna continue to develop, but these guys pound for pound um, are absolute warriors. Uh, they've given us every ounce of energy and focus um, and work ethic that we could uh, possibly ask for. So I'm, I'm sad for these two guys that they don't have another opportunity, but I'm really proud of them and, uh, and the year that Igor had and the career that Chris Gilles had. Thank you, Coach. Let's go to questions now for Chris and Igor. We'll come back for Coach White in just a bit. Uh, guys on the uh, right side toward the front. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, Gainesville-Sun. Chris, uh, just how difficult is it? to kind of end your career in this fashion, you know, with a chance to tie it last second shot at the end of the game? Um, 
you know, it's tough to go out that way. Uh, it still hasn't, I don't think it hit me fully yet. Uh, as soon as the buzzer sound, uh, I felt a little bit, but um, so far, I don't think it's, it's hit me fully yet that, you know, my, my college career is over. But, you know, we, we've had some, you know, games like this where we would have, uh, you know, made that shot. Um, a couple times where we had some, you know, we had a couple big shots earlier in the season and stuff like that, and we just couldn't get this one to go down. We had two chances, um, but I mean that's the way the game goes. Sometimes we we got what we wanted and we just we just didn't make it. On the extreme left, here toward the uh, back, you, Ryan Willett, ESPN San Antonio. Chris, what was the defensive game plan to try to stop or slow down Keenan Evans tonight? Uh, just not let him get any, you know, easy looks early. Um, he had some tough shots. Uh, they, a couple guys hit a lot of, a uh, couple tough shots uh, late in the clock. And uh, I mean, I felt like we we did a good job of defending him. Um, but I mean, he's a good player, so you know, he's gonna he's gonna get his his points. Uh, we just tried to, you know, limit um, the damage he could do. And hey, we'll move back up on the right toward the front. Yeah, uh, Kevin Brockway against the Sun. Igor, uh, tell me about the look that you had at, at the end of the game and uh, also uh, what you saw in the scramble situation and the look that Kayvon had as well. Um, yeah, I mean, we got, we pressed, we got the turnover we needed. Uh, I was kind of, you know, ready to shoot there in the corner. I bubbled the ball a little bit and then I saw the guy kind of, he fell down or kind of tripped or something that threw me off. You know, um, it was a good look. It was a good look. I had a good look earlier too, uh, with the shot clock winding down. Um, you no, know, it's tough. It's tough. Sometimes you hit those shots. Uh, I didn't come through for my team uh, today, but um, you know, just how it is. Sometimes early in the year, we we hit some big time ones, and we just couldn't come through today. Okay, moving back to the left on the inside aisle. Uh, Jake Winderman, ESPN, Gainesville, Igor. Obviously, this was your only season in Florida, but can you talk a little bit about how much it meant to you and what your feelings are, obviously, emotional as you are as it comes to an end tonight? Um, yeah, sure. Like uh, like Chris, I don't think it like fully hit me yet uh, that this is over. Um, but, but, I mean, it's sad. It's really sad because, you know, the whole year we've been, you know, we, we grew so much throughout the year as a team, as people. Uh, it's been a lot of fun being around this program, just around coaching staff, players, I mean, to the managers, uh, everybody who works uh, for the University of Florida. Uh, it's been a blessing for me uh, because, you know, when I made my decision, I said I'm not going to look back and, you know, just, just go with it. And I'm just, I couldn't be happier that I came to the University of Florida, even if it's for one year. We'll stay up front here on the right. Chris, I know it's a little sudden question for you, but how, how do you reflect on your time at Florida and everything that you know you managed to accomplish in helping you know get the team to lead eight, making some big plays along the way? Um, it was a, a fun ride. It was it was wild. I had a, a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, but I wouldn't wouldn't trade any of it um, for the world. So um, I'm glad that I chose to come here and you know stay here with the coaching change. And uh, it's probably, you know, the best decision I made in my whole life, just, you know, sticking through that that process and, you know, just staying with my team and just forming a brotherhood and, you know, joining, uh, gaining new family members. And uh, it's just something I'm, you know, never going to forget. Uh, it, didn't go, it didn't end the way I wanted it, but uh, I can look back and say I didn't have any regrets. Um, I played as hard as I could, and uh, we just came up a little short today. Any other questions for Igor or Chris? No hands. Okay, guys, we'll let you go back with your SID staff to the locker room. First, we want to say congratulations on a terrific year. Thanks for being here. Let's go to questions now for uh, Coach White. Coach here on the front. Mike, uh, Evans is obviously a, a huge factor in the stretch run. He was an All-American for a reason, but was there anything you felt like maybe you guys could have done differently with regards to some of his playmaking and, and what he was able to do down the stretch? Yeah, we, um, they, Kevin, they do such a good job with their random movement, with their with their motion. I, I don't know what what Chris calls it. We we consider it, you know, a, 
you know, freelance passing game motion type offense. We just we call it motion, uh, a la Arkansas, and um, they really move it well. The ball changes from side to side. Of course, screens are so random, flares and pin downs and away screens and cross screens and back screens. Um, and when we're when we're we moved with the basketball, when we loaded to the basketball, all five guys, one guy being on Evans, the other four moving to the basketball, we did a decent job. We had some breakdown with all of that ball movement at times where we have a guy or two, whether he got out of a stance or not, he didn't move to the ball. We didn't load to Keenan Evans a couple times when, um, when we needed that, at least a couple times. I mean, he, he got to the rim too much, of course. Uh, we got straight line driven, just one on one, just Keenan Evans versus a defender, uh, like he's in the park, one on one, he's at the rim, and um, it, that that can't happen, you know, to get to the Sweet 16. That said, it's very difficult to contain him. He's big, he's strong, he's physical, and he's got a a really explosive first step. It reminds me of of, of Jalen uh, in person. I, I didn't know he was he's quite that explosive. Um, I thought we did a good job of going under ball screens when we switched to zone, um, doing a better job of, again, just keeping him out of the paint. And again, all that said, uh, he goes three or four from three as well. So he, he hurt us from everywhere. Now on coach's left. Uh, coach, a lot of people will say that your team lives and dies by the three, but it seemed more so with Chris Chios out. After he picked up his fourth foul, the offense sort of went stagnant. Would you say it's more accurate to say your team lives and dies by Chris Chios' play? Um, at times, Jake. Um, we've, we've been effective with him out of the game a few times this year, of course. I mean, obviously, with Chris in the game, we're better, both offensively and defensively. He's our best defender, uh, recognized by getting that award, deservedly so. And, and offensively, he's... He's arguably the best passer in college basketball. I don't know where he stacked up with all those numbers, but taking care of the basketball, um, getting guys shots. You know, we weren't the best shooting team, the best scoring team. Uh, otherwise, his numbers would have been inflated even more. But uh, we, we, do, we do play through him. When he's out of the game, we have a tendency to call more stuff. You know, we're a little bit less freelance. Um, and so, yeah, at times we have been stagnant with him uh, out of the game. We're going to. We're going to miss him dearly, of course. Extreme left now underneath the light. Hey, Mike. Um, you had a timeout left, but the floor was scrambled. Did you like how it looked at the end there? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going back and forth in my mind, of course. Do we call one? Do we call one? Um, they're, they're terrific defensively, and we, uh, we had a good offensive lineup out there. The ball's in Chris Jill's hands with the floor spread. and uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure we would have drawn up anything better than a couple looks we got. You know, I'm, I'm pleased with those looks, of course. Chris got to the rim, and I thought Keystone made a, made a, a great decision when he got um, he got a tough rebound and hit Cave on. And um, just unfortunate they didn't go for us. But uh, you know how it is. If we had made a few, you know, earlier in the game, or gotten a couple stops, or kept Keenan and Evans out of the paint, or uh, bum rushed them. Uh, late clock, you know, when we allowed him to get uh, a couple of those threes off, and we're up five right there. You know, the, we don't we don't need those shots to go. So uh, we were in a position we had to we had to hit a huge one, and, and they got to stop when they needed one. Again on the left, zone defense was really effective at the point where the first had to, time all year. Where, How about where, that? Where you, you had to use it because of, of the foul situation, right? Yeah. Uh, fouls and just, just the flow of the game. I, I, we were afraid that it was going to get away from us. They were scoring at a, at a high clip. Um, and it was a tough decision. I'm, I'm glad we went with it. it. It obviously gave us a chance. We've worked on it all year. And, and when we've, we've thrown it out there at times, for whatever reason, probably because it's very average, uh, we've, we've, gotten, we've gotten torched with it. And um, tonight, it, it was pretty good. It was good for us. Uh, I thought that um, we communicated pretty well. Um, we, um, our attention to detail was, was decent. We, we struggled to rebound out of it, of course. They got a big offensive rebound, extra possession uh, versus it. Uh, memory serves correct. But uh, I thought our guys made a pretty good adjustment. I have time for two more questions for Coach. We'll go toward the uh, back here on the left side. Ryan Willett, ESPN San Antonio. Coach, uh, Coach Beard said he wanted to keep this game in the 60s um, and limit the pace. Uh, did you want to play it in the 70s or 80s or even higher? And if so, how did Texas Tech uh, slow the game down or, or keep, you, keep you in a lower scoring game? Yeah, uh, first off, we, we always 
I mean, we want to play in the 80s, but we want our opponent, our opponent in the, in the 50s. You know, I mean, every team, every, every team, every coach wants that. In, in, if you if you've got to if you've got to choose a, a ton of possessions versus very little possessions, we'd rather more. But we've also fallen into a trap um, because we've been so prolific at times in transition offense and inefficient in transition defense, where we've been taken advantage of in terms of. Uh, falling into the trap of, of shooting it quick and, and uh, having teams grind us out defensively. Uh, four or five games this year, um, the time of possession for us, kind of like a football game, was very, very lopsided. And um, it's hard to make shots when you play three-fourths of the game on defense. Uh, so we've had to evolve as a team. Um, I don't know if you saw us earlier in the year, but we were when we were playing with, with um, teams that want to run with us or teams, you, you say that, whether it had to do with us or not, teams that were playing really fast, um, our guys liked that, and we were pretty good with it. And then we ran into some teams that were making us defend for most of the game and weren't really as effective. So getting back to your second question, I mean, how did, how did they do that? I think that I think Chris has got a, a disciplined team, first off. I think the, their transition defense was good. Their floor balance was good. They're really, really fast. They're, they're as fast as I've seen this year at changing ends, um, both offensively and defensively. Um, and then I thought they grinded us out. Um, it's, it's, uh, you, you can hear them over there demanding some passes and some movement. And um, they, you know, a part of our six of 22 from three um, is probably having to do with the fact that we, you know, we're, we're in a stance and, and we're negotiating screens and and, um, and and playing long stretches on defense. And I thought they did a good job of that. Hey, the final question here on the right. Mike, uh, just how difficult was it navigating the foul trouble? I mean, you had Jalen, too, with three fouls. You had to sit him for about five minutes in the second half, and then Chris bringing him in and out. And, yeah. and how much did you wrestle with bringing either one back sooner? A, a bunch. I mean, the whole second half, it was just it, it, probably the biggest top, uh, topic of conversation amongst the staff, you know, whether we're in timeouts or not. When do we get this guy back in? When, what's your gut feeling? Um, what do we do without Chris on the floor? When do we go back with Jalen? Um, and some of that had to do with the, the, the decision to go zone two. And we, we threw it at the wall, and it, and, it, and it happened to work. And we considered it another zone that we've uh, dinked with a little bit. But yeah, it's um, yeah, no fun dealing with foul trouble, of course. Uh, but we, we put ourselves in that situation. Um, overall, I don't think it was, it was a huge factor. I think Texas Tech was just good. Uh, and I thought the environment was, was great. You know, so hats off to their crowd and, and the way that they brought it. Um, it, was a, it, was a great, it was a great college basketball environment. Thank you, Coach, and again, congratulations on a terrific year. Thank you. Remember, the court will be um, dismantled and press row in about an hour and a half from now. So if you're working on the floor, you may want to move here until